Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. It has been an eventful week for us, even though we did skip one day posting for Benjamin's birthday, we still had a lot going on. I mean, we got a lot of snow. Yeah, this three storms week. come through. Three storms. Without melting. Yeah, so just snow on top of snow on top of snow, which it's beautiful out there. And I think we're supposed to get some kind of an ice storm possibly. Oh, really? Have you heard that? Or freezing rain tonight? I don't know if that's true. We do have a 100% chance of snow here in about 30 minutes. It's supposed to snow for four hours. And then I don't see any freezing rain on the forecast anymore. I so see the highs good. getting up into the 40s though. Yeah. So it'll all go away. It will go away. We've got a lot of rain and snow on the forecast for the next 10 days. So anyway, it's been interesting weather wise and we are taking tomorrow off from posting, but by the time this video goes out, you will have already known that. Uh, but tomorrow is Samantha's birthday. So we're gonna take that day off and spend some time with her celebrating her. But anyway, um, yeah, let's just jump into the videos from this past week. The first one was organizing the studio and repotting and training Monstera Minima and mini Monstera to poles, which I know very little about those types of plants. In fact, I don't even know. I know there was some talk in the comment section that some of them were mislabeled. I go off of what the labels say when they come to me, and I know they're not always labeled properly, uh, but I don't know enough about those plants or care enough about it to lock in on what they actually are. But I got them repotted, I got them put on poles and they are looking much better. I'm looking at them right now. Um, and then we did some organizing in here, both Aaron and I, we just picked up clutter, put things away, cleaned a little bit and it just helps. It helps make me feel motivated uh, to do more projects really and then get ready for the season too because we're gonna be starting seeds here shortly. So C Still Wagon said, will these plants outgrow the poles and eventually start to fall over? Yes. Um, as the plants get bigger, we'll want to repot them into bigger containers with larger poles or larger trellis systems um, so that they can keep on going. Angie said, I could watch you pot and repot houseplants all day long. Do you recall where you got that adorable Nutcracker Fairy Garden set? I got it from MyFairyGardens.com back in the day, it feels like. I've Do had they still sell stuff? They sell stuff, yeah. Um, but I got online just to see if they still had those pieces and they don't. Hmm. Um, so, and then I Googled just Nutcracker Fairy Garden or miniature Nutcracker garden pieces, whatever. I did a bunch of searching and I couldn't find them anywhere. Um, yeah, those Nutcracker Fairy Gardens uh, pieces, I get them out every year thinking I'm gonna come up with some fun idea and it never amounts to anything. So I let Samantha play with them and that's, that's that. I don't think I'll probably try. It's uh, so hard with all the different scenes. If you're going to try to yeah. make. Yeah. I went and got a bunch of pots. Remember you went with me. I got mm -hmm. a bunch of gray pots and I was going to do a multi-level kind of fairy garden or miniature garden where it was the different scenes from the nutcracker and putting the appropriate pieces in i but think it's... the hardest part is getting plants plants yeah because it's a winter theme and yeah. it's like well everything's just kind of like snow and you know evergreens i guess yeah. but then a lot of the nutcracker is not outside right so it's a little bit hard I don't hard know. to make the connection. Yeah. Ontario y Yam Yaman said, random thought, Aaron and Laura, after watching your latest recap video, as long as, as it is humane slash safe, would you ever consider attaching a GoPro camera on a collar to Russell just a couple of times to watch a day in his life in the gardens? Your viewers might love it. There is an Instagrammer that does this and it's quite enlightening and entertaining to watch. I wonder how Russell would react to having a GoPro. Oh, he wouldn't GoPro. like that. Probably not. Mm -mm. Because they don't even wear collars. Right. You know, because they're outside. So. Right. Um, it's pr they're pretty heavy too. The, well, the yeah, GoPros. there's not any kind of smaller camera you could attach. Probably, is there? probably I, I don't know of any, I wouldn't feel good about attaching anything though, like around a, a neck yeah. or any of that business, um, for an animal that lives outside. I don't know. And they're in and out of like brush and you yeah. know, stuff like I that. I know there are caught. other cameras though that, that are smaller. So the, I'm sure there's something out there that's not a GoPro. Probably. That would be fun to watch, though. I'd yeah. be very interested. It'd probably be a lot of him just laying in the greenhouse, just chilling. Yeah, it's almost like at night. Because, like, I see on the cameras. Yeah. The cats are just all over the place. Yeah. Not so much when it's super cold. They're mm -hmm. hanging out in the greenhouse. Yeah. But... Well, it could show him fighting with Douglas. Yeah. They don't even yeah. fight. They just... Oh, they do kind, kind of, of fight. yell at each other. I, I posted a reel on Instagram. Um, I was showing you guys what the amaryllis looked like that day and then i could hear that from the window so i opened the window and looked out and they were sit, sit, sitting out there growling at each other so i went outside um, and i was kind of i was filming them and then i cut it out but they got into a bit like fur flying fight 
I cut that out of the reel. I didn't want to show that, <laughs> that. Um, but that does happen on occasion. Okay, next question was Horse Casper said, is anyone able to find the small natural online? All I can see are the giant buckets that cost an eye watering amount, I know. It took me forever to pull the trigger on, but I bought one because I just thought, well, this is our, what we do for a living. I'm gonna deal with fung fungus gnats until the end of time. So I may as well just invest and I can use off that bucket for the rest of my life. Um, or anyone else try those mosquito bits for fungus gnats. Um, I have tried the mosquito bits. I didn't think that they were that effective and maybe I wasn't using them properly. Um, the natural, we're working on getting it in smaller quantities and putting it in our shop. I don't know if we're gonna be able to do it, but we're gonna try. And there have been a few other websites that have, have sold smaller amounts of it, but it always seems we like a little sketch. We need to find out if, it's, if we're allowed to. Yeah. If, if it's possible, if they already pre-make it, or if we could like meter repackage, it out, meter, repackage, yeah. and sell them in smaller quantities. Yeah, so we're looking into that right now, and we'll see what we can do, because it really has been um, the most effective way to date. Definitely an investment though. User said, great informative video on the Monstera. I have never had a plant that grew external roots which required a separate pole to grow on. When watering, do you also need to water the pole or, and the plant or will the watering the plants be sufficient? You could just water the plant, that would be fine, but I'm gonna try to keep the poles a little bit moist too because I think that will encourage the roots to uh, adhere um, because they'll be loving that moisture. Uh, so you could do either either one. Okay, Lindy said, does anyone know the brand of poles she used for the Monstera plants? The only ones I can find have a huge wooden pole to be driven into the soil. I like hers as, as two small pins. Uh, those are a brand called Mosser Lee and the type of pole they are, it's called a totem pole. And my parents' garden center has carried them for ages. You could probably call them or email them and they would be happy to ship one out to you. Um, but you might be able to find them online as well. So Mosser Lee, Totem pole plant support. Is How do you spell Mosser Lee? M O S S E R, Mosser Lee. L E E. Oh, okay. Next video was sealing terracotta saucers and thinning radishes. And that was a nice little afternoon project in the greenhouse. That's kind of what we're after this time of year. Just nice little projects, somewhere warm. In fact, we were just talking these last couple of weeks. So, with Benjamin's birthday and then Samantha's birthday, taking that one extra day off a week has really been nice and it's possible that we might do that for a few more weeks during when it's snow covered outside or really crummy weather it's just it gets a little bit like difficult when you can't get outside to do anything um to film a bunch of projects so we might just take a little extra time so that we can like spend more time maybe creating some educational stuff you mm -hmm. know and putting together some videos that aren't just like watching me shovel snow, you know? And you guys are so sweet in the comment section because I think I mentioned in that video, like, I'm sorry, but this is a, ta a task that needs to be done. Yeah. I know it's not riveting, but uh, it is pretty outside. So enjoy the, the landscape. But you know, there's only so much of that that I want to do too. So it will let you know. Um, I want but... people to know too in that video, I said to you right before you went out, I was like, I'm gonna go out and shovel. And you were like, <laughs> no, no, no. I was going to talk. Shovel. I was going to talk about that when we got to really? it. Yeah. Um, so anyway, we still have that video yet to go. I kind of wonder if people are like, "How come Aaron's not out shoveling?" Well, there was quite a few comments. Was there really? I'm like, "Well, why can't I shovel? I like yeah. to shovel snow." Anyway, we'll talk about that in a minute. Anyway, I spent the um, afternoon. Also, because you're a strong, independent woman. Exactly. That's the only reason. <laughs> I just have to prove that yeah. every once in a while. Um, no, so I got a bunch of those really pretty aged terracotta pots and saucers. I had my mom order like a, spe a special order in. I got, I think, 30 of each size of the, the pots and saucers because, you know, we're constantly influx of plants all the time. And I want to have pretty pots to put them in, especially when we're going to go put them in the Hartley. I want the things to be pretty that go in there. So these specific pots do not have a sealed saucer. And a lot of ter terracotta pots don't have sealed saucers either. Um, you can find them, but oftentimes it's cheaper and all of that if you don't get them sealed. So I just showed you how you can seal them at home and it's a lot less expensive and it's not hard to do at all. And we ran a test three years ago. I think I was wearing the same coat in this video ha. as I wore in that test video, but my hair was darker back yeah. then. Was it at least a newer coat, the same coat? But no, a, the same, same. one. Ah. Same coat. Um, oh, now my hood looks all like ratty because yeah. I um I forgot to detach the fur thing on my hood when I washed it and it got all like all matted well you know I mentioned to you I bought a pair of Columbia boots almost like 
over 10 years ago now. Well, I think we bought them the same winter. I think it was like probably the second year we were married, maybe, maybe the yeah. first. So well, 15 or 16 years ago. We just don't get our snow boots out all that often. No. You wear them a couple, t- when there's snow like this, mm-hmm. I've got them on right now. But um, I mentioned to you, I was like, I'll probably have this pair of boots till I die. Like this is probably the last pair of boots I'll ever wear. Me too. People always ask, where did you get your boots? I'm like, well, 15 years ago, I got them at <laughs> <Yeah>. Famous Footwear. <laughs> Good luck finding them. <laughs> yeah. We're at the stage of life where we have clothes from 15 years ago. I know. That still... I would rather have clothes from 15 years ago and get them a lab tree. Well, <laughs> Though, yeah. I have shoes from 15 years ago. I do not have other clothes from 15 years ago. I probably do. Because I think I'm not the same weight I was 15 years ago. No, well, I'm certainly not either. So I have the clothes, but can I fit in them? Probably not. (laughs) Anyway, um, I sealed a bunch of saucers and then I had that little windowsill planter full of French breakfast radish seedlings that I thinned. And then I gave the chickens the thinned out ones and they were kind of like, meh, if it's not mealworms, they're like, meh, like we don't really care. Um, But I did toss them, it's snowing again. Oh yeah. Anyway, I tossed some snow in with, with the radish seedlings and they just wanted to eat the snow so they cared more about the snow than my seedlings they don't get a lot of snow they don't get any snow of the chickens in the, yeah the no, chickens. Everything's so they're probably very protected. pretty interested in the yeah. snow because it's like they see it but they can't yeah. actually touch it you know though when we had that that night where we were supposed to get 60 mile an hour winds it never came to that it was windy but it wasn't near 60 mile an hour winds but it got co- you know cold negative 6.3 degrees is what our tempest weather station uh, last night not last night, night before last, it got down that far. Uh, But I was just like, not worried about my chickens at all. I have one of those heat plates. They have like little feet and then it's just like a solid, like, yeah, it's all sheet, a solid black like panel that just keeps the temperature a little bit warmer. And I put it right under where they roost so that their feet um, are warm. And then I got one other, it's like, mm, like this big, I got it on Amazon. It's this little ceramic, it's a safe for chicken coop, chicken coop heater. And you just set it somewhere. It's got like the tip thing. So if it tips over, it won't, it'll turn off and all of that. Uh, but we set it back far enough to where I can feel heat coming out of it, but just barely. And it's just barely taking the edge off. But I think having that run enclosed and I made sure like there's a, a hole in the door. I stuffed some frost cloth in there and duct taped it in and then uh, plugged up a couple of holes in the slats of the chicken coop so it's pretty tight in there. Other than around the top there's still airflow because you do want to make sure that it's not airtight for sure. Uh, but they stay pretty pretty toasty pretty in cozy there. In the yeah, very cozy. And they're laying right now. Like they started laying when the temperatures get down into the negative. Well, probably because it's so warm in there. Well, it's not, it's not warm, warm. Like my, you yeah. can still see your breath. Yeah. All of that. And I think chickens are more comfortable in cold than they are in heat. Yeah. So Terry said, if you don't have chickens, can you eat those as greens? Absolutely. Throw them in a salad, throw them on a sandwich, eat them just right there. Then in there, you've washed the dirt off and they are tasty. Claire said, what a great tip. Have you noticed a change in how the saucers hold up to temperature change since glazing them? No difference. Uh, Amber said, are you doing the chicken fodder this year? Yes, I need to get some started. I will get some trays of that going here really soon. I just haven't yet. (sighs) Olive said, what happens if you put sealant on the rim? Nothing, it's just an aesthetic thing. I kind of like there to be still a sharp line, like a distinction between the outside of the saucer and the inside um, because the outside will match the way the pot looks. Um, you won't see a lot of that shininess, the glossiness, just from looking at it once there's a pot in that saucer. And I kind of prefer it that way. Robert said, were there any Russell prints in the drying saucers? I thought about that, but nope, there were not. The cat stayed away and there was no uh, smell at all. I don't think I mentioned that, hmm. but I meant to, but there's absolutely no smell. And I kind of, I couldn't remember because we had done that project outside three yeah. years ago. And I thought, well, we did it outside because I know I was using some sprays and stuff that I didn't want to use in an enclosed area. So I didn't remember what to expect when I opened up the can, but nothing at all. Marriott said, is it okay to pa- paint a pot inside? Sorry, I'm a little bit confused with this stuff. I think it's totally fine. And it's so fast to dry. By the time that I was done painting all the saucers, the first ones that I had done were completely dry already. Erin said, do you find you have to reseal the saucers after their initial sealing? Like, do you need to reseal every few years? I've never had to reseal. So for me, in my experience, it's just a once, 
once in a lifetime of that saucer sort of situation. He Andrews said, how many coats of the paint did you do? How many do they recommend? I just did one thick coat and that's all I've ever done and it works just great. I suppose you could do as many coats as you wanted to though. Yeah. Just takes more time. Deborah Jones said, I love those pots and saucers. Any idea where we can order them from? You can get on uh, Andrews, my parents' garden center website, andrewseed.com. I don't know if they have them listed, but you can, they don't. You could uh, call or email them and I know they shipped out a ton from the first order they got in. Um, anyway, you might chat with them about it. I heard your mom uh, telling me some woes about how hard it is to ship those, though. It is. Because they like... It's pottery. Well, can break. Ca- case in point, I ordered, um, you know, I got some small of that same style of pot and all the saucers came in broken, like to the garden yeah. center when they were unpacking. So they had to reorder all of the saucers, which is kind of a bummer for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Next video is putting together a simple terrarium. That was a fun project. We did that here in the studio. I had a container, like a, it was almost like a fishbowl kind of mm-hmm. look that sits down in this little concrete piece. And um, I was just in the mood to put together something f- with ferns and moss. And I thought it would be, maybe be a good opportunity to go back over the different layers in a terrarium and how I've learned um, how plants respond best in my experience in terrariums with how you layer things. Uh, I ended up putting a little fairy garden piece in there and I think it's really cute. It's in the Hartley now. Caitlin Wheeler said, assuming that terrarium is giving uh, every, given everything it wants slash needs, how long does it stay looking good? I've always viewed such things as lasting a couple months at best. Uh, years. What's that? Years. Yeah, years. No, they can last for a really long time in a situation like that. I think you've given updates before of terrariums that you've done Mm -hmm. that have been years old. Yeah. And it's kind of like um, when you put, or when I put together a succulent arrangement that's like jam packed full of stuff, usually you can get a solid year out of a, an arrangement like that, maybe even longer before you need to pop out like one here or there just to make a little bit of room for the other plants to fill in. Um, Or, you know, and you have to do regular maintenance, regular grooming and things like that. But other than that, there's a lot know. of plants that'll stay. You know, the way you do cut arrangements during the season, it's like, well, you know, you're going to get what? Like a couple weeks out of a cut flower arrangement? Uh-huh. Oh, um, at best. At best. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Whereas succulent arrangements, I feel like if you, you know, it's not going to last forever, mm-hmm. but you'll get even months out of it. And for a person who likes to play and kind of tinker with mm-hmm. with plants as a hobby, then it's like, yeah, it's not going to last forever, but you can you can take it apart and reuse those yeah. same plants in another arrangement. Yeah, and I do that all the time. Yeah, and you'll get way more use out of it than a cut flower arrangement, say. Yeah. Christy said, great project. Question, how is Aaron's weather station working out? Great. Um, okay, not great. It doesn't measure <laughs> snow fall. And how could it, though? I don't know. I didn't even think about it, but I would love, I would love a weather station that could somehow uh, is measure. Is there one? I'm sure that there is, but it has I mean, to be you can close measure to the it outside, yeah. you can see, but still it'd just be nice in an app because it's more about the history yeah. of like, we got this amount of snow on this day and that way you're not having to like write it down somewhere or whatever. I just want the, the history, you know, mm-hmm. on one app that shows everything. So it's fine. But when it talks about how much moisture you're getting, you know, it's only counting the moisture that's wet. You know, if you have like a dry snowfall, it's not going to mm. pick up anything. So Good and bad. Yeah. It picks it's, up the temperature. <laughs> yeah, it picks up the temperature. Mm-hmm. And I have noticed that it is, we are like one or two degrees colder or warmer than whatever the app. Like if you just pull up, you mm-hmm. know, your iPhone, whatever the weather app is. Yeah. Um, like here at our house, the weather station m- m- measures it a little bit colder or in the summertime, a little bit warmer. Hmm. Not by much, a degree or two, but that is kind of interesting to know. Yeah. Rob said, what's the longest you've had a terrarium without replanting? I'm trying to think. I did a light bulb once, a great big light bulb. I think I did it for a video. That one lived for several years before we took it apart. Um, I would guess like three. Yeah, probably. If not more, because I used to have, I've got those Edwardian, like the cases. And I had one of those planted up for a long time. Like most of the years we were at the townhouse because I planted it up when we still lived in the apartment and then it moved with us. Yeah. So that one might've been going for seven, 
eight years wow. before I tore it apart. M. Melvin said, one of my favorite projects you did was planting succulents in a large light bulb. Do you still have it? If so, how is it doing? So I don't have it anymore. I did plant them in a large light bulb. That's the one I was just talking about. And then it lived down at the garden center and then it got bumped and cracked. And then we ended up tearing it apart because we couldn't keep it in the glass any longer because the glass was broken. Um, but that was a really fun project. Uh, zombie girl said, I'm a little confused. You've done terrariums in the past and use hydrostones at the bottom. Now you're saying not to, not saying not to, never did <laughs> use hydrostones. If you have them, it's just a matter of what you have your hands on. Does it uh, have to do with the type of plant going into the terrariums? Um, so hydrostones worked great in a terrarium situation for me. I don't find them as, as plentiful as I do just the regular stuff. So if I have hydrostones on hand, I will use them. Uh, if I don't, I don't use them. So if I had hydrostones, I'd absolutely use them in a situation like that. They worked really well for me. Um, Vicky Scary said, what is RAM? <laughs> <laughs> there, okay, that was funny because some people caught the humor and some people did not. <laughs> well, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to be that humorous, I guess. It was sort of like me being sarcastic. Or... Yeah, well, it was like sarcastic slash humorous to me. Okay, let me explain. It was like... Um, you asked me what I thought about the fairy garden piece. The truth is, I, it's like out of my wheelhouse. Like I, one, I don't really- AKA he doesn't care. I don't really care <laughs> that much. And even if I did care, it's like, wh what does it matter? If you like it, do it. If you don't like it, don't do it. Like, yeah. don't ask me. So the joke was kind of like, you know, what did I say? Something about how much RAM I have in yeah. my computer? Yeah, something about, do you like the amount of RAM in my new computer? I was trying to think of something quickly that like Laura wouldn't care about or doesn't really know about, but maybe I care about because uh -huh. if you have more RAM, it's easier to edit video projects. So if, if I have a lot of RAM, to me that's <laughs> exciting, but to Laura, she wouldn't care one bit. And I was, so it was kind of like sharing the a opposite play, of. Play on that. Yeah. If that makes sense. Mm -mm. Brian and Tammy Olson said, lovely container. Thank you. Will the moss continue to spread? It. I, it will, I hope. I think that would be just amazing if it took hold in there and started to spread itself around. And that's kind of the goal. I want things to kind of like root in and start stooling out a little bit. And then it's at that point, like after things have spread around a bit, that I would go in there and cut, like clip some of it out, which is easy to do with that, um, that moss. You can just kind of cut that stuff up and it just doesn't seem to mind. Hence the cutting it out of its container, cutting a lot of its root ball off. Carol said, love the simplicity of this. The last class I took had so many layers and this makes much more sense. I, you know, sometimes I think it's overcomplicated um, and it's just unnecessary. Makes me want to try one again. Could you use succulents too? Absolutely. I would shift my type of succulent or soil to cactus and succulent soil instead of using the regular soil. That's the only difference. And maybe we'll do, I was thinking, thinking about maybe doing a cactus like a version because there's some really cute cactus down at the garden center right now that I think would be really fun to work with. Marissa said, love, love the arrangement. I have a question about hardiness. You mentioned that the moss is hardy down to negative 30 degrees. If I live in a zone 8B, will that survive here? If the plant tag only says hardy to versus zone, what is the difference? Sorry if my question seems stupid. It's not stupid. It's a confusing thing. So it's hardy down to negative 30 degrees. I don't know what the range of that is. It might be like a zone 4 through 7 or a zone 4 through 8. If, if it said, and let me look it up, that might clear some stuff up. Irish moss. It's a zone four to eight, so it would do it, would do it in your area. But if it was like a zone four through seven, that means that if you live in a higher zone than a seven, um, it's, the plant's not gonna get enough cold hours in order to be productive. It needs a certain amount of dormancy, a certain amount of cold hours in order to do what it, it's meant to do. Um, so, you're in the in the zone which is perfect it's supposed to snow for the next like four hours i know it's beautiful and the flakes are bigger because it's warmer out today yeah. i just love it oh. paul's probably like Ugh. Yeah. i did a bunch of sh shoveling for him the other day yeah. um but he got the tractor out and like did our entire lane for all of the neighbors in front of all the mailboxes um yeah he gets after that it. tractor has been so useful yeah, it has. if you have a small acreage you've got to have a little compact tractor. Yeah, now we can talk about it because the next video is tidying the greenhouse, shoveling a bunch of snow and repotting three, uh, three house plants. So I started that video one day, it was the morning of Benjamin's birthday. I knew we had a huge crowd coming that night and I wanted a place to do a pinata. 
because and he didn't even ask for a pinata but i just thought it would be so much fun and they loved it so um, i cleared out the greenhouse it needed it anyway there was tons of just random miscellaneous junk laying around in there so got it all cleaned up uh opened up the center to where we could throw a rope over the one of those poles and so you could, you know, do this with the pinata and go up and down and all of that. And the kids had plenty of room for the stick. So we did that. And then two days later was the morning where I shoveled a bunch of the snow. And Aaron did say he was going to go out and shovel. And I was like, no, 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 I'm about ready to go out there. And I'm going to toss a camera up because it might be kind of pretty. Um, so you did plan on going out I there. I got it. I got it, Grace. Also, I got it. Also, everyone's like, why don't you use a snowblower? Well, we don't have one. All you right? know what, though? <laughs> I'm going to get one. I'm going to yeah. get the DeWalt... Um, I, you know, I watched a video and it didn't look like it was that great of a snowblower, but if you order it without the batteries, it's not that expensive and we already have all the batteries. So do you think you could pick one up locally like now so that we could use it while it's still snowy out? I don't know. I almost feel like we should just get it for next year. I don't want to store it and maybe there'll be a new version by next year. So, maybe maybe, so. I'll probably wait. Yeah. Well, Either way, snow, shoveling snow, especially it was dry snow, so it wasn't enormously heavy. There's something kind of therapeutic and tangible, like the tangible quality of that sort of project is nice. I also saw some comments about why I didn't sweep the cars off. I didn't want to, so I just didn't. <laughs> I don't think, I think you guys understand. <laughs> we need more uh, storage so that we can put the trucks in the barn. Yeah. Well, we're, we're talking about all kinds of different options. And once we get the overhang mm -hmm. on the back of the barn or whatever we end up doing back there, we to where we can park space, gators though. back there. Yeah. And the golf carts, they're just sitting out, just getting piled with snow Yeah. right now. I feel like that is not good for them. We should have a cover over them at the very least. Yeah. Anyway, once we get, yeah, more covered storage for the the uh, gardening vehicles then we can park in the barn hopefully and then i repotted three house plants because that was on the list for the first day and it just didn't happen and i had some really cool there was a sansevieria a uh, ripsalis ripsalis and then a euphorbia and they're all in the hartley and they're looking good so far my backyard science said do you ever have issues with snow dam damage on your greenhouse we haven't no, we don't, we don't get enough at any no. given time. Well, even we didn't that, have it the first year. Yeah, even that year, though. I mean, it's pitched. It's a, the Gothic arch, and all the snow just, like, falls off. It doesn't have a chance to sit. Now, my parents have, like, the, the regular, like, dome one, and that one they had to put boards in the center oh, yeah. to keep it from. Is that called Quonset? I don't, I don't really like it. Just a Like a hoop? dome? Just a hoop? I don't. I don't know if there's, there's probably a specific name. Judith said, I enjoyed your video so much. What is snow ice cream? So snow ice cream, there's different versions all over the place. I think a lot of people do snow with like real maple syrup, um, like in the Northeast, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but what we did was heavy cream and sugar and vanilla and a pinch of salt and you mix that all together and then you go out and get a big bowl of snow and then you drizzle that over the top and stir it really fast and it does absolutely turn into uh, like a delicious vanilla ice cream next time because i was following i just googled a recipe for snow ice cream next time i will like double or triple the amount of sugar because we're used to pretty sweet ice cream and then chop up some strawberries which our stores are carrying they're they're um grown in the u.s i need to see where they're exactly grown but they are mm. delicious right now and i thought oh i could just chop up some of the strawberries and put it in the snow ice cream that would be so good aaron wouldn't partake and aaron actually i was going to put it in the video and he was like i wouldn't do that because you're going to open yourself up to all kinds of like how contaminated snow is but like what can i do i actually like, i googled know? it and everybody was pretty much saying in small quantities it's fine to eat snow yeah but I, I um, people worry too much about everything. I don't know. Like if you ever melt snow down, there are like, it's a little dirty depending on what kind of day. Because if you go outside, sometimes you can just smell the smoke in the air. Yeah. And all this, the snow that's coming down is like, you know, that those smoke particles are attaching sure. to it. And uh -huh. it looks white, but really it's, ugh. but okay. I guess you're breathing it in too. Yeah, I suppose. So I don't know. It was good. We enjoyed it. Feather Free Bird said, how are your fish and the pond area doing? They're doing great. Um, Paul did put a, with a floating stock tank heater in there just to make sure it didn't ice over completely. I didn't go out there yesterday, but we drove by, past it and I could see that the water was still running on the waterfall, but the ice was starting to really build up. So we should probably go look at that and make sure that there's no ice dams like backing the water back up and around. So far, so good. And the fish are doing great. They just hang out in the fish cave down there. Um, as long as we keep an open spot in the water, 
there's still oxygen going and I think minimum depth they were telling me for having fish in a, in a pond in our area is two feet and ours is a little over three feet deep so they're just fine down in there Marcy said hope Benjamin enjoyed his birthday he did he's such a sweet boy he is question your boxwoods always look so lovely even in the dead of winter southwest Ohio was hit really hard with a boxwood blight last year do boxwoods recover or should I replace them and if so would it be safe to plant boxwoods again or should we do use I don't know enough about boxwood blight to be uh, to give you an educated answer on that. I would check with somebody at your local garden center or other gardeners in your area. I think boxwood blight is a pretty hard thing to deal with. Um, if that was something we were dealing with here, we would probably consider an alternative option. I'm guessing because blight in any situation is hard is hard to deal with. What's that other variety that Proven Winners is trying to market as like a boxwood alternative? North, oh. Um, it's the, um, it likes more acidic soil, doesn't it? Yeah, it doesn't work that great for us. But. Uh -uh. It's like, Ile is it a jukebox, something? Yeah, Ilex. Ilex, maybe? Yeah, an Inkberry Holly Ilex. There's Strong Box and Gem Box, yeah. maybe. Yeah, Gem Box. And we have tried them here, and we're just not acidic enough. Although, we did put them in a fairly shady spot, a really shady spot. And well, in containers. Where was that out again? Where do we put them in a shady uh, spot? You had them in the uh, the lion urns underneath. Oh, the pergola. That's the right. Pergola area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, they're full sun plants, aren't they? Or no? Yeah, sun to part sun. Yeah. We so, could try them again. Yeah, I think some of those things can be dependent on where you put them. It's sure. like just because you didn't have luck, it's like well. Try a new location, mm -hmm. especially since that was such a shady location. Cranky Chef said, "Why sand and not salt?" Southern girl here. Salt uh, can be really corrosive to yeah. like equipment and to flooring and all sorts mm -hmm. of stuff. I mean, like if you put it on your concrete, uh, you know, walkway or whatever, mm -hmm. like you'll have pock marks the next that mm -hmm. spring. Um, whereas sand, you still get the traction, mm -hmm. but um, it's easy to just you just blow it away and it just you know it does track in your house though. It does, yeah. but you don't really want salt tracked into your house. No, either. no, you really don't. So. The one time of year where I'm like, you can take your shoes off. Everybody take their shoes off right inside the door. Like the one time of year. Yeah. Later that night, because we didn't ask anybody to take their shoes off um, when they came over for Benjamin's birthday party. Um, that later that night, I was walking around barefoot in the kitchen. And I'm like, dang, my feet are going to be so exfoliated by the end of this <laughs> because I'm just walking on sand everywhere. I had to do a big bunch of vacuuming that evening. Tammy Jones said, how do you guys not have a snowblower with all that property? We just haven't needed it. I mean, that first year we needed it, but I think we were like... I don't know. I mean, like last year, did we even hardly get any snow? We got a little bit, but not anything to Yeah, note. snowblowers aren't something that everybody has here just mm -mm. because of how little snow that we yeah. typically get. It's like once every couple of years, mm -hmm. we'll have enough snow to where you're like, man, I wish I had a snowblower. Yeah. Um, but then and you're also kind of like... Yeah, you have to store it. Yeah. And a lot of times you're like, man, I wish I had that five to two thousand or five hundred to two twenty five hundred dollars mm -hmm. that I spent on that slow snowblower and don't use for three years in a row. Right. Ferns and Forest said, Do you get cold drafts near the windows in the Hartley? The plants on the ledges all look so good. There is something about the construction of that building. It is tight. Like it is there's no drafts. The glass, it's cool, but it's not cold. It's super thick. It's super thick glass. Um, and it's just like, it was it was built to house plants and things just do well in there. I don't, I don't even know how to explain it, but I stand in other greenhouses, even greenhouses that look similar to a Hartley. There's something different about them. There's yeah. something different about the quality, the feel of it. It's like, um, it's kind of like, um, you know, you go into a room and it's like kind of like a dead room. Like yeah, it just right. feels solid. That's how you feel. Um, it just, it feels good. And there, I always noticed that. Uh, when I stood in those, like before we had one, when we stood at the inside them during a show, and then there was other brands, you know, uh, represented at the shows, you stand in the other ones, and it just didn't feel the same. Mm -hmm. And it's really kind of fun to see how they do in weather like this. And something I noticed when we got that first initial, like six inches of snow, it stayed on the roof of that thing. Like it wasn't melting off, like everything is very efficient yeah like everything we do run an extra little heater i will say that because we have the mini split on one side and um to keep 
the Hartley up to, you know, temperature, what we want it to be in there. Um, it would have to work really hard to push it all the way over to the other side. So I put that little, it's like an oil filled radiant heater on the other side and just set, set that at, I can't remember where I said it the first night I said it at like 75 um, just so it just emit a lot of nice warm air and it keeps it just perfect in there on super cold nights but I never ran that extra heater when it was even in the 20s no it's really not it's only if you get down into the single yeah. digits so or we're negative. gonna be we'll turn it off last night our low was 14 um, tonight our low is uh, 24 so and then it's back up to 30 so we'll turn that off we won't run it's that. just nice to take the pressure off of the other unit right anyway guys that is it for this week's recap video so we're one video shy this week we'll be one video shy next week but that's just how and probably one video shy <laughs> the, the, the week, week after, after that. but we'll let you know I am planning on uh, filming another one for our beautiful garden series on our on this channel on the highlights channel hopefully this next week so we'll maybe have an extra video out um, on Saturday if we can not this Saturday next Saturday, probably next probably. Saturday um, if we can get it together so those are always really fun and inspirational and it makes me want to be out in out in the garden a lot I I think it's great to see what other people have done to mm -hmm. get ideas for you know pathways or placement yeah. of perennials where like you know yeah the like how tall things get and yeah. where where they should be placed i especially well i love the before and afters when we get some before shots that's awesome but also um learning about other people's challenges too mm -hmm. it can feel encouraging but it also can give you ideas to if you're dealing with the same kind of issue it helps to get your brain thinking you know on ways you can maybe fix it and make yeah. your space better so anyway you guys thank you so much for watching this recap video today i hope you're all having a great start to the week and we will see you in the next one bye